been cutting hair for about 22 years. <coughs> Seriously, about 22 years. I started when I was about 14, picked up a pair of clippers because I had to. I couldn't afford to get my hair cut, so I found out how to cut my own hair. And uh, that's how this career started. I started cutting uh, at some shops. And then I finally just, after a life changing event in my life, um, said to heck we're working for somebody else and started my own business. And from there, uh, we're here. From historically, historically in downtown Reno, it hasn't, in this particular corridor, hasn't been a black owned business, from my understanding. Um, that's just from what I got from some of the old timers is I'm one of the first. So that's a privilege, uh, and I'm also carrying a banner. So, you know, carrying a respectable name. Um, at one point in time, because you had, in the community, because they were predominantly black, so you had black farmers, you had uh, black stores, you had uh, black on clothing, jewelry, and everything. So you had all the things that you needed within there, so it stayed in the community. Um, what happens is, I think, you get pushed out. Um, so a lot of other things, whether gentrifying, whether it's uh, not having the resources or the money, um, you get pushed out. So now the things that were black owned, now other companies come in. So you either big box brands or people with more money come in, and then they kind of push that out. So the dollar actually starts to go other places. The way that we get back to that is having the things that we need and start producing those things more often. And then once we produce the things more often, then it becomes a collective thing that's keeping that money in that community. So I think that's the way we have to get back to it.